Greetings friends, we're back to our regularly scheduled time, and uh, welcome to the drive home. I uh, seem to have run out of topics. Nobody said anything in, in a while about the only thing I've got going, well no, I take that back. I do have a few that we can go over. One of them was uh, what my favorite chemical reaction is, and that would probably be redox, which is reduction in oxidation. Also known, wow, I stalled out my car, I'm doing awesome. Also known as, um, well, which includes such wonderful things as explosions. Because, you know, you gotta love those, right? Good, good stuff. I could be sappy and say my favorite chemical reaction is love, uh, because, you know, that's chem chemistry in the brain and a bunch of other unexplained things. But uh, I'm not gonna go that route. Although, I guess I already went that route since I mentioned it. So, there we are. Um, other thing uh, that was mentioned was what I would do if I were president. And oh man, is that list long. Um, <laughs> I think one of the best things I ever heard as far as me being president that wasn't my own idea was a friend of mine wanted to run for president and he stated that he wanted me to be his running mate because that would be the surest protection against being assassinated because if he was killed then I would become president so nobody would kill him <laughs> and uh, I think I'd make an okay president um, I can be diplomatic I'm not a warmonger I don't I don't want us going into war in fact I think that we could reduce spending and um, in that way and uh, put it towards other departments I think if I were to be president, probably the number one thing I'd really want to do is, as I've mentioned before, get money out of politics. Um, reduce everything to a publicly funded election. Just completely do away with fundraising. Absolutely all together. Um, and that way it'd be really easy to catch people being bribed. <laughs> because if they're getting any outside source of advertising funding or anything, that's bribery. And there you go. You're instantly... Uh, you've broken the law and you're going to be tried. That'd be the other thing too if if I could if I had the power while as president I don't know if the president does have this power I don't think. He'd probably um, influence in such a way though would be to actually prosecute these senators and representatives and CEOs and stuff like that that have legitimately broken the law um, you know stolen billions of dollars uh, either through fraud or scams or various things of that nature um, and actually you know bring them to trial and get them legit arrested for things uh, because then you'd actually have a detriment to doing that sort of thing if you get um, you know somebody gets arrested or one of these CEOs gets tried or whatever actually it's never the CEOs if any of the companies get in trouble for this sort of stuff they pay couple of million in fines but they made billions doing it so it's it's pocket change it's it doesn't make any sense when the punishment doesn't fit the crime the punishment is not a deterrent because it's at that point it's just a tax you know a screwing over the country tax which is less than screwing over the country um, and having any sort of lean or sway to enforce that would be very nice I'd be all for that and if I had that ability. Uh, although, speaking of which, man, if you haven't seen it yet, you should see the video of Elizabeth Warren just tearing into the CEO of Wells Fargo. Um, I don't know if you've been up on current events or news or anything like that, but the Wells Fargo Bank uh, got caught basically robbing their customers of millions of dollars by creating fake, fake accounts um, to oh, I forgot what, what the term of it was but what it was is it was to have the customers have more bank accounts uh, I guess most banks uh, customers have between like three to five bank accounts and Wells Fargo pushes for eight um, they want customers to have multiple bank accounts for one reason or another uh, probably to charge more fees uh, Wells Fargo is good at that I used to be a Wells Fargo customer um, oh, that was an ambulance, and it's behind me. Um, I used to be a Wells Fargo customer, and I learned my lesson after they overcharged me in fees horrifically. And, uh, fuck that. Um, never going with a bank ever again. 
uh, go the credit union. I encourage all of you to pull your money out of banks and go to credit unions. Credit unions are member owned, they're not for profit, they're everything a bank should be. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, go do that. Anyways, so uh, they got caught making all these fake accounts and most customers didn't even know about it because what happened was the bank uh, tellers or, or the the reps, the, the juniors who were being pressured into meeting these crazy goals of making sure all the customers had eight accounts and crap like that, or at least that, that would be the average number, uh, they were pushed so hard into doing this that they used the information that they had provided for them and created fake accounts, transferring money from the customer accounts to these new fake accounts and then transferring the money right back. But that didn't always happen. Uh, a lot of the time what happened is that the accounts would stay open. Um, the minimum amount of money or whatever that was needed to keep it open would disappear in uh, like transaction, not transaction fees, but like uh, account fees or whatever else they could rack on there. And then because there was no more money in the account, they'd start racking up fees. And so customers would start getting letters saying, hey, you know, you owe this money on this account or they'd be sent credit cards and debit cards for accounts that they never opened. And they finally got caught. And um, it was it was like 1.9 million customers were affected by this, some huge amount. And the CEO was talking about, you know, well, I, I take responsibility for this. This clearly fell under my stewardship and something went wrong, so I take responsibility. And Elizabeth Warren just raked him over the coals about his responsibility and how he had never paid back a dime of the money he made while this was occurring. Uh, he didn't resign and none of the senior staff or management were fired or arrested or anything. It's basically, again, they took the poor, the poor peons, the poor guys who were pressured and influenced into, into doing this fraudulent activity and they got rid of all of them. But the people who pressured them and pushed them into doing such a thing, ah, no, they still work there. In fact, one of the, I think it was like a step above a regional manager, I can't remember her name, but she, she wasn't fired, she retired. Like, just as this thing, stuff came to light, it was like, well, shit, if she doesn't get fired uh, for this, then nothing's gonna happen. So instead of being fired, she retired before it had, like, fully hit the fan. Um, but because of that, not only did she make tons with a severance package and all this other stuff, or, or her retirement package, but she also is eligible for a multi-million dollar bonus because of previous, or year-end bonus. Just something nuts like that. It's my neighbors. Hello, neighbors. Um, so it's, it's insane. There, there's no reason why this person shouldn't be in jail or at least fired and have all of her um, funds, not her funds, but all of her benefits and bonuses and stuff just taken out of her hands because, but nah, it's not the world we live in. And were I president, I would do my damnedest to make sure that that was different and that we lived in a fair and just world. Because as, as Elizabeth Warren put it, if a teller just grabbed a handful of 20s, out of a out of a register, um, they'd be thrown in jail. But an executive does it, and it's business as usual. Anyways, that's it for today's show. I'll see you at home.